Okay. Um, all right. First off, just want to start off by congratulating Coach Brown uh, on becoming the uh, new head coach at uh, University of Massachusetts. Um, I know that's a very important thing for him to be able to um, have a chance again to be a head coach, to be able to be by his 11 grandchildren that he has, all of his um, four children, I believe, um, maybe in Massachusetts, uh, his wife who's living out there. So I think it's a great opportunity for him to head back home. Um, just to be clear, uh, we our athletic department was incredible in terms of both financially supporting um, an opportunity for Coach Brown to stay here as well as every other facet of uh, having him stay here. But, you know, sometimes family and um, longevity in the Massachusetts area wins out. And I think for him, the chance to be a head coach again and to be by his family was hands down the most important two things. So uh, we're happy for him. Uh, he is going to coach here for the remainder of the week. He is going to call the defense on Saturday, and then he will begin his uh, venture in Amherst. Um, I'm going to ask him if he'll speak to our media after the game because I know how much you guys all love him and have a chance to have one uh, final conversation with him. Um, and if not, maybe we could work something out in terms of a Zoom or – uh, some sort of call, but he's um, he doesn't want to speak with the media, uh, both the Massachusetts media or our media, until after the game against Arizona State. So I will honor that for him. Um, same with our players. Um, we'll have a team meeting. We'll quickly address it with our team, and then we'll move forward. Uh, we'll open up a national search for the next defensive coordinator. Uh, there are plenty of people that are interested in that position. Um, so... I'm extremely excited about the opportunity to see what we're going to do there. Um, obviously, I have some ideas and thoughts, which is an opportunity. Which is um, when you've coached as many teams as I've coached at, you know a lot of people, and um, so excited about where that will come, uh, who will come in here, um, and then um, the next thing I would say is uh, looking at last week's game. Uh, really disappointed in terms of how we started the game. Uh, we really, we offensively, we made so many errors, uh, maybe stuff that necessarily wouldn't be seen um, to the naked eye at times, but um, missed assignments, mental errors, missed reads, missed throws, penalties. Um, I think in the first 22 plays, we made close to 20 errors. Um, which was just very, very, very disappointing, um, including the fourth and one quarterback sneak, um, which was not called, but uh, Will felt there was an opportunity, um, and I think he kind of just got ahead of himself a little bit and um, saw Mac Jones do it on Thursday night, so he, uh, I think he tried to execute the same sneak. So um, we don't do that. Uh, and then I would say there was a lot of good stuff. I know that Will's accounted for over 250 yards of total offense the last four games each week. He's certainly gotten a lot better protecting the football, making great decisions. Um, we just need to hit on a lot of these passes that we had a chance at. Way too many penalties in the first half. Uh, defensively, way too many explosive runs. I think seven, way too many explosive passes. Um, and obviously against a team that's competing to go play in the Pac-12 championship this weekend, um, they're, uh, they're too good for us to make those type of mistakes, and we made way too many of them. So uh, that is kind of it for Washington State. I didn't spend a lot of time with our team on it because it is all about the Territorial Cup from this point. Well, actually, from yesterday forward, uh, we said we'll discuss the Washington State game in the offseason, and we will spend all of our focus on playing the football game Saturday at 2 p.m. We talked to our team about the traditions, we talked to him about 1899 when the first game was ever played. Uh, talked to him about um, the record. We have a chance this year to win the 50th, have our 50th win, as we've won 49 of them, um, and it's been five years. So we uh, we know that, we recognize that, and uh, we are taking that head on. So our guys will be ready to go. I expect everybody, but. Jerry Roberts, um, 
to be able to play that can play. So Tavion Cunningham is out for the year. Jerry Roberts broke his leg, had surgery on yesterday. Uh, he will be out, um, obviously, until spring football. We'll, we'll reevaluate it in the spring. Um, Jamari will be able to play, we believe. And um, Donovan Lay will be able to play. Josh Donovan will be able to play. And I believe Christian Young will be able to play as well. So what's most exciting for me um, and our program is regardless of what our record is at this point in time, we have every single player that's capable of playing, begging, pleading uh, to be able to be on the field on Saturday. And I always think that's a great sign of a team that's excited. outlined some of your ideas for the defensive coordinator position. Do you want to keep the same style? Is that important to you, or is that not really a factor as far as the, the system? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I'd prefer to do is spend Sunday talking about the defensive coordinator deal um, after the game. We'll have a press conference, um, and I'd be more than happy on Sunday to outline what we're looking to do with the defensive coordinator job. I'd like our focus this week to be – all on the Territorial Cup, and then I'd be more than happy to go through that. Sure. Regarding the, the penalties, the mistakes, and so forth, yeah. how frustrating is it that that's still happening at this late point in the season, and where do you place the blame? Yeah, the um, you know, very frustrating, um, and very, you know, different type penalties each week. It's like, you, you know, I kind of look at sometimes, you know, you have a boat and a hole comes out, and you kind of fill that hole, and then another – hole comes over here and you're like wait where'd that why is there water filling in over here now and uh you know it's a situation that we haven't had wide receivers have false starts um I think since week two and then we had three of them in this game um we haven't had we had seven penalties I believe on offense or whatever it was but it was for 60 yards I mean they weren't we had, uh, I can't think of a holding penalty, I don't believe. I don't think of a personal foul penalty. We had no penalties on defense, which has been where we've been penalized the most. We've had two games with no, only no offensive penalties. Now we had offense and special teams penalties. Um, so you'd love to know why, right, and where they're coming from and why they're happening when you have five special teams penalties and seven offensive penalties in a game when it's really been the opposite. Um, so... I don't know. I don't know uh, wh why they occurred on Friday night. Um, I certainly know we talk about penalties a lot. I certainly know we emphasize it. In the same way, I don't know why we don't take the ball away. You know, we've had six takeaways all season, three of which came against Northern Arizona. So, uh, you know, we talk about it daily. We emphasize it daily, but sometimes it just uh, hasn't happened yet. Uh, the same thing with how we haven't gotten those penalties down, but we need to. Um, how do you avoid – distractions, not only with the Don Brown deal, but the outside noise and, and all that this week? Yeah, um, outside noise about the Don Brown thing and recruiting, or? I mean, that, the, the, the fact that you know, people are going to be coming up and discussing the ASU importance, just how do you kind of keep the focus? Yeah, um, I would say, uh, we, you know, we are making a big deal of the ASU importance. You know, the team up north is certainly, it's a huge game. And um, my hope and my goal is, uh, as I said to our team, um, everybody will travel to the game. But if you're late to a class, you could take your name off the list. If you're late to treatment, you can take your name off the list. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, take your name off the list. Because if you're not focused 1,000% on doing things right this week, we're not going to have a chance. So we've got to be completely focused and completely avoid all the outside noise and have complete tunnel vision, not worrying about necessarily what's coming up next and worry about how we're going to play this game this Saturday and uh, then deal with Sunday, Sunday, because we have recruiting that we have to get on the road for. I'm going to be in 11 states in five days, uh, beginning Sunday at 2 p.m., and um, in order for us to accomplish our goals moving forward, we have to have incredible tunnel vision for these six days. And that's what we're emphasizing. Who was the first person when you were hired to tell you how big, or just to mention this rivalry? Um, I would say that was at uh, breakfast with Teddy. Um, I got hired on that, whatever it was, that Tuesday night, I believe it was, and Wednesday morning at 9 a.m., Teddy came over. Uh, Thursday morning, I guess our press conference is Wednesday. And I asked him, 
you know, I said, I went to Florida, so I understand Florida, Florida State. I coached at Michigan. I understand Michigan, Ohio State. Help me understand the Territorial Cup. Help me understand, um, you know, similar, you know, you're, you're two hours away from Gainesville to Tallahassee, but you also have Miami. You know, when you're at um, UCLA, USC, you know, you're within the same city. Um, but this is special because of – the length of time this trophy has gone on for, the fact that, you know, you're talking about the two um, universities in the state that are Power 5 programs, and the fact that, you know, there's a, a, a obvious animosity toward one another, and then clearly, you know, when it's 63-7 to seven and you call a pass on fourth and four, right, you know, there's something to that. So we remember. Let me follow up on that just a little bit in that you've been here 11 months. What's been your personal impression of the rivalry as people have talked about it or whatever since you've been here? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's, uh, it's clearly in the forefront of everybody's mind uh, since I arrived here. Uh, the, not just the outcome of the season prior, but the importance of the game. And the, you know, the amount of in-state players we have, the amount of players that are from that area, you know, the Scottsdale, Phoenix, Tempe area, the, um, the alumni support that, uh, that I've received as a head coach, you know, they always remind you at the end of that phone call, now don't forget about this game and, you know, the Territorial Cup. And it's a huge part of tradition. Uh, College football, I, I know I've said this, I sound like a broken record, but the pageantry of college football is built upon rivalries, like rivalry games. And the idea of Thanksgiving weekend, um, growing up as a kid, to, to this weekend is like a dream come true coaching in it. And um, in the NFL, when you coach Thanksgiving weekend, you're coaching in week 11 of a 17-game season. In college football, on Thanksgiving weekend, when you're in these type programs, you are coaching in the best and the greatest games you could possibly compete in. How often have you heard the word hate? <laughs> uh, I think it's clear cut what both teams feel about one another. And I think the greatest message that I received from, I asked, uh, I think 50 alumni we've received letters from, I asked to explain to me their thoughts on what they thought about this game. Um, everybody from the 19, I think I received play, uh, guys that played in the 50s up until the guys that played in the last decade. And I think what has been very clear cut is just remember how everyone in Tucson feels is the same way everyone over there feels. So it's one of those type games that the definition of rivalry is very clear. Michael, uh, notice on the depth chart that you moved uh, Anthony Pandy to the mic and Malik Reed up at the will. What's the thought process behind that? Well, um, we lost Jerry. So, um, w how we work our mic and our will, whether that be, um, you know, and, you know, with Pandy being here the whole season, the communication, uh, comes from the, the signal caller to the mic linebacker and with, you know, with no mic linebacker that has played in a game other than Dante being kind of thrown in there the experience we felt in this game probably gives Pandy the best opportunity to be able to communicate with all 11. David. Jen, most of us in this room are from somewhere else, but if you follow the game of college football, you have probably recollection of, of big games in almost every rivalry. Is there a game or a moment to you that you've seen in the past involving ASU or UA that stands out to you and that you can remember? Oh, I remember watching that game in, in 91 or 90 or whatever. Like, well, I mean, I, I believe that, you know, you, you, can't, you, you can't take the job here and not know about Coach Cecil's interception return for a touchdown, right? That's obviously um, the 34-27 win in Coach Stoops' first year. Uh, I'm very aware of that. Uh, we showed a video montage, you know, of some of the games. Um, so we're, we're aware you know, we're aware of all the games, and um, but we're going to focus in on this one coming up this Saturday, and we recognize what we need to do with our team to, to get ourselves right. Great. Do you happen to drive up the interstate and see the billboard? Yeah, I, I have. Um, 
And I, uh, you know, I don't know. That's kind of, that's a unique one to me. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've seen that in any of the other rivalries that I've been a part of. That's kind of uh, a little different. You know, I don't, I can't think of in Gainesville to Tallahassee, I've seen anything like that before or even Michigan to Columbus. But, um, hey, it is what it is. We have to, uh, we have, we understand what the game looked like last year. And um, we had a lot of players on our team that were a part of that game, and they recognize it too. And it's a, it's a bitter, bitter taste in everybody's mouth that we understand that we have to uh, do everything we can to get rid of that taste. Rich, two-part question for you, Jed. Uh, they always say throw the, throw the record books out for rivalry games. Uh, all the players, we've asked them all about last year's game, and they said, we're just looking forward to it. We've already closed the page on that. Are you allowing them to talk about it? for the younger guys, the guys that transferred in? And is there a way that you can use Don Brown's leaving as motivation, win one for Don, and set him out with the game ball? Um, I don't think, personally, we're going to need to motivate our team to um, win one for anyone. Uh, my message is win one for yourselves. You know, win, win the game for yourselves. Go out there and leave it all out there and recognize that, um, you know, we're planting a lot of seeds. And, um, but one thing that would be a very special one would be finishing the season off right. Uh, as it comes down to, you know, being able to talk about last year's game, uh, it, it's clearly been spoken about and it's clearly been remembered. But we are a different team. Um, you know, we went down 44 nothing to University of Washington a year ago, right? This year we're up 16-7 to with nine minutes left. Uh, the last time this team was in Pullman, Washington, they went down 51-7 to at halftime. You know, this year we, we mentioned that. You know, what is that going to do for us, right? We lost 69-28 that time, and we lost 44-18 to this time or whatever the number score was. So we're not going to spend too much time. Talking about the last games, we're going to spend our entire time talking about the importance of the rivalry, the importance of the game, and the importance of playing our best, you know, our best way we can play with the team that we have currently. You take a look at something like that billboard, you say it's different, but what stands out to you about a move like that? Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's a decision that, you know, that people made um, to, to do that and to put the score up there and you know, how they wanted to express it. And, and you know, for us, we'll, you know, we'll drive by it, remind ourselves of it, and um, do everything we can for it not to ever happen again. But, you know, those are the things that you want to just avoid at all costs, right? Just avoid at all costs. And, and that's the best part about college football. Honestly, I keep saying, like the fact that, you know, at Ohio State, they never use the letter M in anything they do. I mean, that's cool. That's fun. That's different. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, at Michigan, you can't wear red in the team room, you know, there's certain things. So I just believe in this case, you know, they wanted to go with a billboard the way it went last year. I understand it. And, uh, we're going to do everything we can to prevent that from happening. And we know that, uh, every opportunity that we have to play that team up North, will get, a, they'll get our best shot. And we know that, um, it's a one game season. Regardless if we were 11 and 0, it's a one-game season this week or not 11 and 0. I don't know what I'll do. I haven't decided that yet. Uh, I don't. I don't. I haven't decided how we're going to handle that. Um, that part of the game. That part of the drive, I should say. Go ahead, Jason. Will you um, have any alumni coming in and talking to the team this week? Um, no, what we've asked our alumni to do, um, you know, we obviously have alumni on the staff that, that could do that. Um, we've asked our alumni, we've reached out to our alumni. Um, I have a letter that I'm going to read to the team from Lance Briggs and from Teddy today. Yesterday, I read about six other notes um, to our team. We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to educate them. Um, but I don't think we'll we'll probably do anything more than just continue to give them the messages. We have some videos that have come in um, from guys. But um, I think sometimes, you know, 
I don't think we need to do more than that. I think the guys understand it. A couple more. We got Richard and Michael. Jed, we're only going to get to talk to you once. So can we get the scouting report for Arizona State offensively and defensively? Uh, sure. You know, you're talking about a very um, well, uh, highly ranked defense. I think they're uh, number one in total defense in the Pac-12. Um, I think they're giving up 306 yards a game. They um, have a very uh, good team. They have a very uh, good um Really, I, I would like to say secondary, but they also have very good linebackers and a very good front four. So we understand we got a great challenge. Um, I know a few of the players didn't play in the game this past week against Oregon State. Uh, I would expect them all back. I don't know that, but I would expect them all back on defense. Um, you know, uh, clearly there's been certain guys, you know, that have been around for a long time. Chase Lucas has been around for a long time. Um, you know, you've got some other guys that have been, you know, definitely impactful players for them. I think they're both their defensive ends are, are very good football players. Um, so we got to be aware, you know, of 91 and 41. So both of those guys are very good players. I think their linebackers are, are good. They're a good football team on defense. On offense, I feel like their quarterback's been there since 17 or 18, I forget. I think when I was at UCLA, he might have been a freshman. Maybe he's one more year after that. We played them when I was at UCLA. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, they clearly – I know their team. We took Nikhil Harry from them a couple of years ago at New England. Um, so, you know, then they had Ayuk go the last year. So they've had some receivers go in the first round of drafts. So we're aware of that. And um, it's a pretty senior-laden team. A lot of six-year players, a lot of fifth-year players. Um, I know the tight ends got hurt um, last week, but, again, my, my gut tells me that everybody's playing, and it's not going to be the team that uh, played on ESPN on, on Saturday night. I think it'll be the team um, that is the healthiest team that they can put out there on the field. Michael? Two questions. Um, number one, you guys hung with Utah for the entire game. Then you saw what they did. Saturday night to um, Oregon. What do you take away from from that? Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I kind of I, I made the comment last during the game against Wazoo that when we scored and then we got the two point play and then they went three and out. I said, Pack twelve after dark, anything can happen. And you know, to give our you know to go out there and see if we can go get another drive. I feel like. I don't think 38 to seven is probably what Oregon expected to occur. Um, I think that we have hung with a lot of teams. I think we've we hung with UCLA and then they go and beat USC by 30, um, and it's 17-16 with four minutes left. I, I really believe that the Pac-12 is a team is a conference that isn't so you know the, I don't think it's so far away from one another. I think you just have to find ways to stay healthy and win close games, which we haven't found ways to do. And then I think every now and then there's that separator game, kind of like that that one game that just gets out of hand and you're not really sure why or how that happened. Um, I thought our game against Utah was a really good football game. I think we played probably our best game all year. I think they played fine. They played good. Um, they didn't turn it over. We didn't turn it over. You know, all the things that good football teams do. And um, I think in the other game, you know, they hit a punt return for a touchdown and some crazy things happen. And, you know, they kind of got after the special teams and, and they had a big win for, you know, at home against Oregon. So kudos to them. And uh, But I, I expect us to be in very close games all the time. And uh, as I continue to say, you know, once you start uh, losing close ones, you should start winning close ones. The other thing I want to ask you about is the schedule. Did you have the guys in over the weekend? Yeah, What's the schedule I'll go through that. Week? Sure. Are you having yeah, sure. Um, so here's what we did. We gave uh, we got in at uh, five ten in the morning on Saturday. So uh, we gave the team um, and the coaches Saturday off, um, other than uh, treatment and rehab. And then Sunday we were in. We practiced yesterday. Uh, today is game planning day. We'll go normal Tuesday, normal Wednesday. And then we'll start a tradition here Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Thursday morning at 9 a.m. for Thanksgiving. We will have a Thanksgiving Day breakfast for every player and their family. So we have invited every player on our team and their parents and siblings 
to a Thanksgiving Day breakfast, which we'll have out on the field. And then at 10 a.m., when the breakfast is over, we'll go into meetings. Um, the families will be able to watch um, the Lions game, I think, is what's the first game. And then we invited all of the families to practice, um, to watch practice, watch their sons, some of their sons' last ever football practice. Um, and then at that point in time, we'll be done middle of the afternoon. Um, asked everybody to sign up to tell us or to tell me where they're going for Thanksgiving. And if they don't have a place to go, they'll come to my house um, or their position coach's house. But nobody eats Thanksgiving dinner alone. And then uh, Friday we'll be back to normal where we'll then continue on to get on the bus and head out. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And Appreciate we are, it. We are filming in here with Coach, so if we could.